G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, have a look at that. We've broken the $400 billion mark, just like that. I wasn't sure we were gonna do it, uh, and we did, and it happened oh so quickly. It was only literally like a few days ago, you know, maybe a week ago, we were just, you know, constantly going down and getting towards that 348 billion, uh, 350 billion. I mean, only a few days ago it was higher than that, but not that long ago, we were down around the 350, 360 billion. And particularly, we were at around about 368, 372 billion only literally a couple of days ago. So there's been over $30 billion put into uh, the cryptocurrency market uh, in a matter of, you know, less than a week, a few days. So that is the power of cryptocurrencies. But interesting. BTC dominance has fallen only ever so slightly. I think it was 60.1% and now it's 59.8%. So not by much, but still it has fallen. The exuberance is coming back in. People are getting pumped uh, and they're getting back into altcoins. Now, what we are looking for, as I've said before, traditionally, there's a bit of a pullback over the weekend. Quite often on a weekend, it's not always, but it is a, a majority of the time. I would say probably nearly 80 to possibly even 90% of the time on a weekend, there's a bit of a pullback, including in bull markets. You know, obviously pretty much all weekends when you're in a bear market, it's just generally going down. But even in bull markets on a weekend, crypto generally pulls back. So we're in quite a tear now we're waiting to see, was the kind of pullback that we had sort of yesterday? Because Bitcoin was up in the $13,000 mark. Is this the pullback or is there possibly more to come over the weekend? You know, we'll have to wait and see, but let's have a look. And I've got some stories that might, you know, help us work out what might happen. Whether the pullback that traditionally comes has already happened and we had it on kind of the Thursday or whether there still might be more over the weekend. But look at the movers. Aave. In 24 hours, 16% waves, 11%. And so we got some really high single digit movers here. So Synthetics Network, which is good. They've been going for down for quite a long time. I was hoping for, not so much hoping, but I was suspecting it to get a little bit cheaper. So we'll have to wait and see. I think I might uh, get some Synthetics Network when I do my uh, sort of fortnightly purchase, weekly purchase. Uh, in the next few days, uh, it's at a pretty good price considering it was around about eight dollars So it's still 50% off where it was not that long ago, but there's been some losers Filecoin, I think this project is dead in the water. I mean I could be wrong I never invested in it anyway But from what I hear there's a lot of issues with it and the price is just absolutely plummeting and it hasn't been around for much more than seven days, so it's just gone down. Uh, but the rest of them, I mean, that's not too bad. You know, kind of single digit uh, drops. Yeah, it, it could definitely be worse. But OKB, uh, obviously, you know, it's 21% over the seven days. And the rest of them, again, they're not too bad. But let's go and have a look at the chart. So get rid of that. So we had this breakout and we went above the 12,500. And we, you know, went well above it. And now it looks like we might still be going up, but we've just got to wait and see. We're not entirely sure. You know, it's early days. I mean, this didn't even come down and retest it. So that's all I'm sort of worried about at the moment is that we might come back down and retest this sometime over the weekend. There's no guarantees. Again, it's just going on sort of probabilities and what's happened in the past. And traditionally over a weekend, Bitcoin has a pullback. It's just the way it is. But we can't tell exactly when it is. So it's not always uh, on like Saturday or Sunday. Sometimes it's on Friday. Other times it's late Thursday evening. And, you know, it could be any time over a weekend. But then there are weekends where it just, it doesn't pull back at all. It just rockets straight through. And the pullback doesn't happen or maybe comes Monday or Tuesday, something like that. So we'll have to wait and see. I am, you know... Cautious is the better word that we might see a bit of a pullback over the weekend. Whether we come back and test this twelve and a half thousand dollar level or not, though, who knows? But there is some stories that I think might help, you know, 
us make our mind up whether we think we're going to get a pullback anytime soon. I mean, you know, we could get a little bit of a pullback, you know, back to sort of, you know, 12,800 or something, you know, come back here and sort of retest this. And that would, you know, be a very minor pullback. So that's hardly anything. That wouldn't be something that, you know, I'd have even really register. But we may see a pullback more kind of back down towards here. And again, possibly even back down towards here. Although I don't think so. And this is why. These stories are the, make, are the reason that make me think if we have a pullback over the weekend uh, and, you know, this kind of stuff here might be the pullback. So, again, we're up around that $13,200 level and we're already back here. But, yeah, we'll wait and see. These stories might help us make our mind up, though. Funds locked in DeFi surge by $1 billion as analyst tips post-election bull run. So, the... The DeFi market had a little bit of a, a downside to it, I guess. I mean, you know, it was still building in how much was in uh, in it, but it was more stable coins than anything. Uh, and now it seems like people are definitely starting to buy back into the actual platforms and that as well. There's some exuberance building again. So again, for me, I haven't sold anything. I've literally, well, that's not true. I sold, uh, what did I sell? Some... Dogecoin uh, a while ago and I didn't sell it I just traded it so I did a swing trade with it but other than that swing trade that I've done and that was the only one I haven't sold anything and I haven't traded anything I've just held on to it so I rode Synthetics Network up to sort of $8 uh, and I rode it all the way back down to where it is now so $3 something I rode Chainlink all the way up to God what was it nearly uh, $20 or something like that and I rode it back down to the $10 it is now uh, you know, I'm an investor and I'm in it for the long haul and I think this is just going to ramp up and go again. Look, good traders, they may have been able to, you know, sell it almost the top and now they're buying back in now and, you know, possibly making more. For me, I'm just, you know, I'm an investor. I find it so much easier. Yes, you know, I may not do as well as some traders, but most traders lose money in general and most traders, other than just a couple of gifted few, uh, they don't do as well as uh, people who just simply invest. Do your research, find out what you like, get into it, and if you're holding for the long, uh, long term and you're in a good project, you're generally going to do well. So $1 billion has been put back into DeFi. So we can have a look here. Following a six-week cooling-off period for the majority of decentralized finance protocols, the DeFi, the DeFi bulls are back in action as total value uh, locked surges to new record highs. So again, it's at new record highs. Now the price hasn't been matched that because a lot of it is more in stable coins and things like that, but people are slowly starting to get back into those, uh, the platforms or the actual uh, governance coins and things like that. So again, you know, the, the Synthetics Network coin and the Aave coin, so the Aave coin did really well. So it's now at 12.3 billion. And this just keeps growing. It was only a few months ago, we were barely scratching like sort of 2 billion. So we have gone from 2 billion to 12 billion in a very short amount of time. And this is still just getting started. At the peak of this next bull run, I couldn't even imagine how good the, you know, the good DeFi projects are gonna do, but I think they are gonna do astronomically well. Again, this is just my personal opinion, not financial advice. I think Aave, it's it's unbelievable. It has so much upside and potential for it. Even at the price it is now, uh, I think it's got a long way to go. And again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. I think Synthetics Network has you know massive upside potential. I think Ren has massive upside potential. I think uh, what is it? Carver has massive upside potential, particularly with that Harvest IO. And I will do a video uh, on that some stage in the future. I need to do some more research into it, but I'm pretty sure that was released not that long ago. Projects like that, uh, they've got so much uh, upside, uh, and I believe they'll probably be around for the sort of, lo at least the medium term, if not the really long term, particularly things like Aave Synthetics and Ren. I, th I think they have got uh, years ahead of them uh, before you know they kind of stabilize or may die off if they die off at all. Again, just a personal opinion, not financial advice. So there's more money being locked into DeFi. Like we've gone up another billion. Is this the start of just a really big run? Now we go back to here. We've already had a pretty good, you know, pump up here. 
So considering more money's got put in, is it possible that we're going to see, you know, a sort of a reasonable correction? Maybe not. But also, what else can we find that might help us? Grayscale adds a cool $300 million in a day and $1 billion this week. Just this week, they have put in another billion dollars. Crypto manager Grayscale's investment has increased its assets under management by $1 billion in the space of a week. And that is this week just gone, up to the 22nd. According to an updated post to Grayscale's Twitter account on October the 22nd, and it's usually running about 24 hours uh, lag time, so it's actually the 21st, the investment firm currently has $7.3 billion in assets under management. That's a billion dollar increase on the $6.3 billion that Grayscale reported on the 15th. Each report is delayed by 24 hours, so it refers to the previous day's figures. So this came out on the 22nd, and that was as of the 21st. Every couple of sort of you know weeks, we keep hearing that they're just buying more and more. Even they think that Bitcoin and all these other things are still massively underpriced, and they are loading up on them. And they are considered the smart money. So if the smart money is loading up, maybe it's still a good idea to be buying. Again, you make your own mind up. I know what I'm doing and dollar cost averaging is the best way. But all I'm saying is if they are still buying, they're not going to be looking at selling for less than what they're buying. So if they're still buying now, it says that they believe it is still massively underpriced and it is still a really, really good time to be buying. So hey, if they think it's a good time to be buying, I'm probably going to follow the smart money. And again, these are going to be considered the early adopters and the smart money. And look at the things that they're buying. Now, I don't like everything that they're buying, but they have some, you know, some nous about them. They're pretty clever. They've been in the space for a while. And again, just the fact that they're still buying now says that they believe the price has still got a long way to go and they're still buying it cheap because they're not going to be buying it when they think, oh, you know, we're going to lose money from this. So... According to them, and all the data we're getting, it's still cheap. So that's enough for me. They're buying Bitcoin. They still think Bitcoin's cheap. They're still buying ETH. They still think ETH's cheap. They're buying Litecoin. And Grayscale reported its Litecoin trust had increased the most since the previous day's report by more than 7.5%. So I'm glad I've got myself a, a bit of a stash of Litecoin. And I bought it quite some time ago. Uh, and that's gone up massively. You know, 7.5% is a pretty big kind of jump. Uh, Zcash, they're buying uh, Ethereum Classic. That's, you know, I don't understand that. So again, I'm not on that. Horizon, I don't know enough about it. Stellar Lumens, I've got, I've got some and I'm considering buying some more. XRP, I've got some of that and I'm probably going to buy some more as well. Bitcoin Cash, I don't have any of it and I'm just not sure if I want to get into it. But again... It's just the fact that they're still buying. So whether you like any of these coins or hate them all and like something else, the fact that they are still in the market at the moment says that they think all of the cryptocurrency space really at the moment is undervalued and it's still bargain uh, basement prices. So again, we go back to here. Are we going to see a bigger correction over the weekend or are we just going to have something that, again, maybe comes back to around the $12,700, $12,600 mark, which is really not much of a retracement at all because they're still buying. They're bullish. And again, this tells me that it's not just them that's buying. They didn't do this alone, although I'm going to say Grayscale's $1 billion investment had something to do with this. It wouldn't surprise me uh, if Square Cash App is still buying more. It wouldn't surprise me if MicroStrategy is still buying more. It wouldn't surprise me if there is a number of big institutional buyers who are going to start buying. As I said, once we get past this $12,500 mark, they are going to start to be getting itchy and they're going to be like, oh, is this legit? Because again, a lot of them, I'll zoom out, a lot of them are still worried that it's not going to go past this and this is a fake out. They're still thinking, oh, this is going to pump up and then roll over and just start to fall back down here. So they're in sort of indecision mode at the moment. Between 12500 and this $14,000 mark, 
there's still going to be a number of institutions out there just keeping an eye on it. And once it breaks this, this is when it's going to start moving very, very fast. When we have a true confirmation and not just a fake out that busts above and then just falls straight below, that's a fake out. That won't have uh, the big investors in. Once this moves above $14,000 and then possibly comes back down and retests it and builds for a while, and it won't be too long, it'll only be a little while, it's going to move very fast. There's just air here straight up to 20,000 and then it is just going to start to move exponentially fast once we get past 20,000 because again you know the smart money will consider themselves smart because they all have identified that yes it is going to break all-time highs because it's gone higher than its last peak so they will consider this the smart money still getting in although the smart money really got in sort of down here and even is still getting in down here this technically hasn't gotten past this barrier yet but once it does they want to be in it before it breaks its all-time high. But once it reaches its all-time high and goes past, then I guess, you know, what you could consider sort of dumb money, but I wouldn't say it's dumb money unless they're, you know, not holding for the long term. If they're holding for the long term, they can be considered smart money. Uh, if they're just looking for some uh, quick gains, then they'll probably be the dumb money uh, and they'll get burnt because they won't understand the markets well enough uh, and they'll probably sell uh, too late or too early, whatever it may be. But again, this is where it's going to start to move, but we've got to break that $14,000 mark and we need to show that we're not coming back down below. So DeFi is booming. Grayscale is still adding and they added a billion just in the last week. And again, I'm going to say they're still buying now. I reckon we're going to hear about them continuing to buy until this is broken. Once this is broken, I'm not sure. But again, they may continue to buy right up until here. Because really, in the grand scheme of things, if you know institution starts to really jump in uh, and retail starts to jump in and it gets that true mass adoption... $20,000 for a Bitcoin could still be considered absolutely dirt cheap. Time will tell. Who knows? Now, the last one. Billionaire Paul Tudor Jones calls Bitcoin the best inflation trade as token surges above $13,000. So again, it's fallen below $13,000, but only just at the moment. But you need to take this with a little bit of grain of salt. So uh, Paul Tudor Jones, uh, big time investor, you know, very highly respected. But as far as I know, he hasn't actually bought any Bitcoin. He is in the uh, Bitcoin futures market. So he's not getting paid out in Bitcoin. So he's not really owning any Bitcoin. It means he's more just betting on its volatility uh, and its uh, the price movements. And again, he's going to take that in cash. As far as I know, that may well have changed. Uh, and again, it's only like, I think, 2% of his total net worth, though, that he's been put into Bitcoin futures. So if he's not actually buying Bitcoin, I don't think he really believes in Bitcoin. I just think he believes that there's going to be uh, money to be made uh, you know, in its price range. It doesn't mean that he truly believes in the technology. And that is where it's going to be more bullish. When we find out that he's actually bought Bitcoin and he's holding Bitcoin, he's not just simply in it for fiat money, that is where I'm going to be more bullish on it. But look, I'm still bullish and it's good that uh, he's come out and he basically says buying Bitcoin now is like buying Amazon and Google in the early days. He thinks uh, it's early fintech stock that has a massive upside. But again, I'll be more positive about... Uh, him in the space if he's actually owning Bitcoin. But look, whether he does or doesn't, you know, that's really up to him. It's still bullish for the price. And again, the fact that he thinks it's like owning Amazon and uh, Amazon and Google in the early days says how much upside there really is for it. So with all of this news locked in, again, more money pumping into DeFi. Grayscale are still buying, and I think there's going to be you know information that comes out that other companies are. Uh, what was it? Mode over in the UK, they put in 10% of their cash into Bitcoin. Now, all of those things are playing into this. That is all playing a part of this. So that's what makes me think we're probably not going to have a massive pullback. There definitely could be a pullback, and I would say, you know, coming down to sort of 12,800. And again, look, maybe we even come back down and test this 12,500. But I really would say over the weekend, I would be surprised if it comes down below sort of 12,000, sort of 800, 12,700. 
that would be uh, the weekend pullback. And again, you could maybe even call this wick a pullback. Maybe we just sort of travel sideways for the next day or two. And again, maybe pull down to sort of about here. But I think once it starts on Monday again, there's going to be uh, another big uh, pump from there. And there could even be another CME gap. I think that one back down at 11,100. I don't think that's going to get covered uh, anytime soon, if ever again. I don't think that $9,600 CME gap uh, is going to be covered. And I guess technically maybe that one at 11,000 uh, sort of 100 uh, was sort of covered. Again, there were wicks uh, going both ways that technically you know you could consider that was covered so again but we may have another one created this week and we'll have to wait and see but again we'll just who knows there is no one out there that truly knows but based on all this i think yeah we're going to keep going up i don't think we are going to have any massive pullbacks anytime soon that's not to say they won't come at all uh, this cycle will definitely have them i just think at the moment there's going to be a number of institutions uh, that are going to be bullish and have probably pulled the trigger now that we've gone above this and definitely once we get above this there will be other institutions that are going to dive in so i don't see any major pullbacks coming in the sort of near future at least until we hit here but again we could get up to twenty thousand and then have a real big correction and come back down and test this but i'm just not sure i think bitcoin uh, is going to surge and there's going to be minor pullbacks until we get through 20,000. Personal opinion, not financial advice. You make up your own mind. You do what you want. Speaking of you do what you want, if you wouldn't mind, could I get you to hit that like button down below? It really helps my videos get seen. I post every day. I try and put as much you know effort into this as I can. I have a regular job. I, you know, I've got a family and a life outside of this. So, you know, I have to divide my time evenly I guess sometimes uh, but I do this for the love of it uh, it's just something I enjoy I want to pass on the knowledge that I have and I'm learning more every day and I'd like other people to learn uh, you know as much as they can as well I think this is going to create untold wealth for the people who get in early enough and understand and I don't think this will be the last cycle where big money can be made I think there'll probably be another cycle where fairly big money can be made after that, I think the returns on the bigger ones like Ethereum and Bitcoin and that will be a lot smaller, uh, but there'll still be massive returns for altcoins. But again, as this matures, it'll become more like the regular markets and there will just be less upside uh, in them. But this cycle, I think there's going to be plenty of upside and the next cycle, I think there's still going to be a good upside. I do think there's a chance that this may be the biggest Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency cycle ever. I think this could, and again, this is maybe a bit more to do with inflation and things like that, this could eclipse any of these other ones because we didn't have mass adoption. You know, we didn't have a ton of retail in here. We definitely had some retail in here. And again, even in here, this was just early on. This is when, you know, Bitcoin was worth a few cents you know what I mean? So, you know, pumping from sort of, what is it, $2 here up to $100, you know, don't get me wrong, that's good. I'm not saying it's not good, but there wasn't that much Bitcoin around then. So it was really, really easy to pump those markets. Uh, I think this one could be absolutely mammoth considering institutions are now going to buy it up. You know, maybe banks, you know, governments and all sorts of things. This could be absolutely massive could be wrong again maybe it only do, do, you know gets to sort of 80,000 90,000 and that's it but hey look it, it could go to something silly uh, and again people you know that I respect uh, Chamath Palipatia sorry I hope I didn't butcher his name very smart guy uh, you know again Paul Tudor Jones he sees massive upside very smart guy Raul Paul very smart guy Anthony Pompliano very smart guy Dan Held you name it there's a ton of people out there and they're saying that Bitcoin could go to like a million dollars uh, in the next five years I think it could possibly happen sooner I, I'm not saying it will I, I, I don't really think it's highly likely but I think there's a chance that that million dollars may happen 
quite quickly if we really, really get mass adoption and institutional money and retail money just pouring in. How long it'll stay at a million dollars for is another question. I think at some stage it will level out around that kind of million. But, you know, who knows? We might see a million dollars in 18, to, uh, you know, 18 months, 24 months time. Never know. All right, again, hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that game train. We love that game train. And I'll see you next time.